on this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang, I'll be featuring a backstage pass to the opening nights of the Broadway production of Death of a Salesman, directed by Miranda Cromwell, Two River Theater's production of Alice Childress's Wine in the Wilderness, directed by Brandon J. Durden, and the New York Historical Society's opening reception of Black is Beautiful, the photography of Kwame Brathwaite. The Broadway production of Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman opened to rave reviews at the Hudson Theater on October 9th and will play a limited run through January 15th, 2023. Following its critically acclaimed run at London's Young Vic Theater and on the West End, Arthur Miller's Death of a Salesman is told for the first time on Broadway from the perspective of a Black family. This vibrant and timely production is directed by Miranda Cromwell, who co-directed the London production alongside Marianne Elliott. Olivier Award nominee Wendell Pearson, Olivier Award winner and 2022 Tony Award nominee Sharon D. Clark reprised their roles as Willie and Linda Lohman, and they are joined by Chris Davis as Biff, McKinley Belcher III as Happy, and Tony Grammy and Emmy Award winner Andre De Shields as Willie's brother Ben. The cast also features Blake DeLong, Lynn Hawley, Grace Porter, Kevin Ramasar, Stephen Stocking, Chelsea Lee Williams, and Delaney Williams.
to borrow I will make my way to that river to home precious thing ever. Love and time. Oh. <laughs> so, me to give a memento of this precious moment and time to my father, 97 years old. <laughs>
every single person who has worked so passionately and tirelessly on this magnificent piece of theater has done just that, changed the world. I am grateful to be here to celebrate with all of you. I raise a glass to each and every one of you to changing the world. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And now, I'm honored to turn it over to our brilliant, fearless, remarkable leader, our director, Miranda Cromwell. Miranda, yeah, it has been a true privilege to collaborate with you on this and to watch you tour. Thank you so much. Thank you. So to you, Miranda. the most humble person to work with, the most incredible actors all the way through, especially Sharon D. Clark and Wendell Pierce, who have led three incarnations of this production and in every time have just opened their hearts up to these new performers coming in and have built a whole new world every single time. It's just, just inspires me, it makes me brave, it makes me courageous. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Marianne Elliott opening that door for me, inviting me to be part of this. And the process has changed me completely as a person. I also, uh, the biggest thing I wanna give a shout out tonight is that this has been done with so much heart and so much love and so much humanity. And I have never been through a process up until this point, to this hard edge. Yeah. <laughs> that can keep its heart, can keep its humanity, that can have so many different kinds of people from so many different walks of life in the space. And I'm so proud of that, and I'm so proud of everyone for holding on to that and treating each other with respect and working so fucking hard. <laughs> every day, working so hard, you know, from every single department, from stage management, the dressers, the crew, everybody here at the Hudson, all of the incredible actors that we work with, the amazing producers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cindy Toler, who's held my hand throughout this. Thank you. Thank all of the audiences for coming. I've never seen more diverse audiences in a Broadway theatre in my life. And I'm so humbled and so honoured. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Welcome to this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Today, I'm at Two River Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey for the opening night performance of Wine in the Wilderness. Two River Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey is presenting Wine in the Wilderness, written by Drama Desk Award winner Alice Childress and directed by Obie Award winner Brandon J. Durden through November 6th. The cast features Crystal Dickinson, Brittany Belazaire, Riccardi Febre, Corey Jackson, and Keith Randolph-Smith. Set in 1964 during the race riots in Harlem, this reflection on how art truly reflects life focuses on artist Bill Jameson and his latest work, three paintings representing three types of Black womanhood. More than his artistic vision is challenged by the arrival of an unexpected muse who refuses to be bound by his shallow assumptions of all that Black womanhood can be.
<laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, I am Michael Hurst. Uh, I'm going to try not to cry after all of that that just happened, but I am Michael Hurst. I am still the managing director here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, God, I'm happy that I am still here to, to get to witness this. So, uh, welcome all. Thank you for coming. Uh, I do, uh, John and I just want to take a minute to thank some people. Um, this is so great! Yes! <laughs> some of our, our supporters who have been our longtime supporters. This couldn't happen without them. So thank you to our season sponsor, Hackensack Meridian Health, Riverview Medical Center. Some of you are here tonight, thank you so much. Our production sponsor, Bank of America. Here, here tonight, thank you very much. Uh, our restaurant partner, Triumph Brewing Company. Heather at the show. And Single Market, who, who did our food tonight. They're a Playwright Alice Childress is often described as a groundbreaking artist because she was the only African-American woman to have written, produced, and published plays for four decades. Really marvelous people. And then, here tonight, you are witnessing all of this. You're seeing and hearing the work of some extraordinary artists who we've invited into this theater. I hope they come back often. Uh, led by our stage managers, Nicole Jones and Alex Murphy up there in the booth. Uh, Natalie, Nicole. Natalie, sorry, Natalie. Um, and uh, thank you, Crystal. And, um, and then our design team, whose work you're seeing up here. I think Miss Karen Perry, our costume designer, is here in the house. I hope. Set designer Richard Morris, uh, uh, lighting designers Chris Gilmore and Kathy Perkins, sound designer Kelly Richardson, our big designer Nakia Matthews, I think she's here at this, and she's here right now, and uh, our intimacy coordinator Kaya Dunn, who I just had a great time. None of us would be here if it weren't for the, the beautiful work of um, somebody we should send a lot of gr gratitude and congratulations and love up to up there in heaven, Alice, Miss Alice Children's. <laughs> and, and then can you help me with um, a little bit of roar of applause to bring to the stage our director, Brandon yeah. Drew. Welcome to this edition of Backstage Pass with Leah Chang. Today, I'm at the New York Historical Society, where the exhibition Black is Beautiful, the photographs of Kwame Brathwaite is currently on view through January 15, 2023. This exhibition is exquisite. Thank you. Exquisite. Thank you. I understand that your father lives in New York, but has not had the chance to see it. What do you think uh, is going to be his reaction when he sees all of these big as life or bigger than life? You know, I, I'm really excited for him to be able to come and be in the space and really enjoy the exhibition. He had always imagined his work at this scale. Um, I remember even when I worked with him when I was 16 years old, and he was speaking about, you know, we need to be able to get these things, you know, almost the size of a person, right? And so the fact that these largest works are five feet, you know, this one here is five feet by 47 inches, so it's five, you know, five feet by four feet, and the square ones are five feet by five. 
by the, I think for him, it's going to allow him to kind of basically almost even relive these moments, you know, these moments that he captured through his lens um, and be able to really experience it. And I, and, I, and I love being able to see people experience the work because that's often what happens. You know, you walk into a space and photography has the ability to take you back. You know, it, it, it makes you wax nostalgic. And so I think when you look at these images and these different sizes, anything from like the size of an album cover to these really large scale, beautiful images, it really takes you into the experience and allows you to really Think about, you know, what is, why are we looking at this particular subject? What's important about them? What are they thinking? What's their story? And so I love the fact that we're able to do this for him. And I think he's going to be extremely excited. I think when you, you walk into the space, um, you enter kind of the introduction to kind of what Black is Beautiful really means, uh, both from the historical significance of the active part of the movement, but also what this visual representation and then we move into kind of the ideology, right? Which is Think Black, Buy Black. Um, and the ways in which they wanted to kind of promote messages of self-sufficiency, you know, recirculate with black dollar, um, of having an ideology and a thought process that was um, something that builds you up rather than pulls you down. And then ultimately the granddad's models who are really the representation, the visual representation of um, you know, the establishment of like what people now refer to as black girl magic and you know, all that. I think they are the epitome of this movement, really um, showing them they're, they're living their lives, they're activists, they're educators, they're people from the community, they're sometimes celebrities, you know, just by chance. But I think they're people who live this um, kind of mantra that black is beautiful that embrace their African and also just wanted to build the community that was that they were a part of. And so I love the fact that you get to see, you know, imagery, you get to experience some of the clothing that they wore, you get to see some of the flyers that they used, some of the music that they listened to. And so I think it's a multimedia experience that will put you back kind of in time and, and allow you to kind of really appreciate what they did for us today. And what did it mean to you, for you to put this exhibition together? It, it's pretty incredible to be able to go and really think about um, your parent or your parents or people that you grew up with, learn, you know, knowing in a, in a you know, father, child, or parent situation, but understanding them as human beings. As an adult myself, understanding my perspective as, as a father, understanding his perspective, as a, a father, an activist, an, an artist, um, it's been absolutely incredible, and it's, it, it's. I feel like I've gotten to know him as a man, um, and so for me, it's been incredibly important. It's you know, I, I'm passionate about it. You can probably tell. It comes out, and you know, I can talk about this for hours, and and I really love the fact that because of this, now things are happening. Like, you know, there was a documentary about the, the work they're doing at One Can. And that was, you know, Dr. Reno was put together by a group of people who wanted to represent what was happening here. Um, the Grand Dassel models are now back together and doing work, and they're gonna be doing a talk here in November. And so those things really make me happy. And I, 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 in me being able to shed a light on my father's legacy, it's also shedding a light on all these other people and the legacies that they've left behind. Wonderful. That is a really powerful statement, and it was throughout Harlem and other communities around the country that were really trying to support that Garveyite uh, movement. So you see it here, it's the same sign, by black, by black, and it's, and it's, and oftentimes even in some of the shows they would have it there. So it was, it was really a core principle um, and it's actually still something to this day that is that is something we talk about, right? A lot of the, the black dollars in community at an at a increasingly rapid rate, one of the things that we're trying to do is make sure that as black people we support black businesses as well as as well as we support the other businesses. So
Kwame Brathwaite deployed his photography from the late 1950s and throughout the 60s as an agent of social change. Brathwaite helped found the African Jazz Art Society and Studios and the Grandasa Models, popularizing the transformative idea Black is Beautiful by organizing events surrounded around Harlem's artistic community. The New York Historical Society's Bernard and Irene Schwartz Distinguished Speaker Series featured a talk with the artist's son, Kwame Samore Brathwaite, Tanisha C. Ford, and Khalil Gibran Mohammed in a discussion of his father's life and work.